Um, thank you so much, Mr. General Director. Um, it is an honor, a great honor, and a great pleasure for me to be here today. And I'm very honored and I'm very grateful to represent here um, in the Academy of Cultural Diplomacy, St. Petersburg School of International Relations. I'm not sure whether you can hear me. Good. Yes? Good. Um, I'm very grateful and I'm very happy to represent Russia here today because I know that nowadays uh, we are facing very, very difficult times actually in the modern world. Um, I think that you'd rather expect me speaking of hard security issues of Russian Federation, I must admit, facing all that is going on. But still today, I'm going to speak about soft security issues and about um, the new Russian agenda. I do want to get you to the notion that not only hard security thinking is capable or is good for Russia, soft security is really, really better for the world. In terms of cultural diplomacy, in terms of everything, we are not supposed to think only you know, through hard security issues. And I, want, I do appreciate the speeches of my, of my colleagues, my, the previous speakers. And you know that Russia is also a multinational country. And we have so many difficulties connected with nationalities, connected with terrorism, with tolerance. We've also came through most of those issues. And I think that afterwards we are facing, we'll have a very interesting discussion, hopefully. And I have prepared just a small presentation for you. Um, if you, yes, if you can help me just, thank you, because I, I just, if, if I may stand here instead of standing here, because I like, you know, moving when I speak, it is better, and something is, is in, in, my, in my eyes, so that I can't see you, unfortunately. So, um, when, People talk about Russia, nobody talks about soft security issues. Before my presentation is being put on, I just want to remind the audience that soft security issue is not a Russian concept. I'm not plagiating it, so I'm talking, you know, I'm very, I'm very clear to the audience. This concept was introduced by a representative of the United States of America, Joseph Nye, the junior, and Russian Federation from 90s, we starting looking, we started looking a bit on this concept because we do really understand how important it is to put, to provide national branding, to put language, culture, uh, uh, historical background, civilizational issues into national branding and the promotion of national image worldwide. Because Russia, I know, after the Ukrainian crisis, after the crisis that unfortunately we have been um, looking, we have been going through with Turkey, and I'm very sorry for that. All these issues have elaborated notions in the international community that Russia is first and foremost connected with bombs, war, and so on and so forth. Uh, being a scientist, hopefully, I don't want Russia to be associated with it. And now I hope that I will, I will try to bring you to the questions and to the issues why. Why Russia is being associated with hard security issues, why it is important to understand that Russia does have this shift towards soft security, security issues. So, first of all, unfortunately it is not working. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. This is a d diversion, you know. <laughs> Sometimes, every now and then, it happens. So, unfortunately, I'll have to stay here. So, no, no, it is not working. Um, okay. So, no, nobody can. Can you help me? It is not working. So, uh, this is a diversion. Every now and then, it happens. Yeah. So don't worry, it happens with me, I know. <laughs> because with all the others, it won't happen again. So first of all, I want to point out that uh, in Russia, we have 
very different perception of security issues. We started having new perception of security issues when in Russian political discussion we started talking about globalization because globalization brought new political agenda for the Russian Federation. We got through many, many issues because before globalization was put into the political agenda on the Russian Federation, before 1991, it is important to remember that Russia was living in bipolar world and we had this psychology of bipolar system. And it was a very, very difficult, it was really extremely difficult for us to get through. And well, as I, have already, <clears throat> as I have already told you, when interdependence with globalization has enriched Russian political discussions, we started talking about hard, uh, about, um, hard politics, about hard power as one of the symbols of Cold War. These discussions appeared in Russia. And there have been many, many, from 90s, we started talking greatly and a lot about soft power and soft security issues. And even in Russia nowadays, and from 1991, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we started having lots of issues connected with Russian geopolitical thinking. You know, we had these dramatic shifts. I will be talking about it through my small presentation, we had a very, very difficult shift from bipolar system to, um, uh, to globalization. Russian culture and language is being greatly promoted by Kremlin, by Vladimir Putin nowadays as the national brands, the national images of Russian Federation that, according to Kremlin, may help to promote Russia and to ruin the notion that Russia is more connected with weaponry, with guns, and with expansionism. Because Europeans, I know, every now and then, as well as Americans, they blame us for being very, very expansionistic. Yes, I must admit that Russians are expansionists, but this is due, due to geopolitical thinking that I have, been, that I have mentioned. Concept of foreign politics introduced by Vladimir Putin introduces all these crucial issues for us. And I must admit that um, after, after the collapse of the Cold War, we had some problems with Russian national identity because Russia in its identity a little bit was a bit lost. And it is difficult for us to understand which way to go, to, to the east, to the west, but I will talk about it a bit later. And what um, Moscow and Kremlin and personally Vladimir Putin is very much con uh, connected with nowadays in, soft, in terms of soft security issues is Russian idea and Russian cultural identity. It is very important to understand where are we going, you know? You never know, if you don't have the light in the end of a tunnel, you never know where you can get to. Russian foreign politics has so many complications. We are not understood by the West. Every now and then we are not understood by the East. And just look at the map. We are somewhere, we don't know what our identity is. We have such a huge country. After 1991, after the, the collapse of the Soviet Union, it has been so uneasy for us to understand where do we need to go. I might, just a small historic traces for your historic discussion. In 1991, the westernizers concept came into power in the Russian Federation. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, we had some discussions, you know, that the president then, though back those times, was Boris Yeltsin and Andrei Kozarev, they brought so many new notions to the Russian society. Because back then, before 1991, we didn't have democracy. You know, in Russia we have a famous saying, a famous joke. This is a bit of religion, but I, um, I hope that I'm not going to offend anybody. So there is a famous... Uh, famous short anecdote story, funny story, that what is democracy in Russia? 
Democracy is when God come, took Adam and brought Eva to Adam and said, well, now is your time to choose your wife. This is democracy, Russian style. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, no, I'm not, I'm not offending anybody, I hope. So it is difficult, it is very difficult to come through all those issues, you know, it has been a really, really great burden for us to understand what democracy is because of our civilizational thinking. This is so uneasy. And to understand what human rights is, you know, we, sto we um, stopped um, capital punishment for a while when in 1997 we became members of, Europe, uh, of the Council of Europe. But now we, in Russia we again have this discussion whether capital punishment should be implemented in Russia again. So a great change. In 1993 Eurasianism, a new concept came into power, had it by Mr. Primakov. He was very fond of the East and he said that we should move to the East. The representatives of westernizers, they were sure that Russia should be Western country. By the way, when I ask my Russian students, when I ask Russian students, is Russia European or Asian? The answer, Russia is European. Mm -hmm. When I ask European students, whom I have a pleasure uh, to teach in the university to, they answer, no, Russia is Asian. This is a mess in identity, but in 1993, Evgeny Primakov said, Russia is more Asia than Europe. Then, when Vladimir Putin and then Medvedev partly came into the office, they proclaimed that Russia should keep this balance between East and West, between Eastern and Western identity. This is very important to understand, understand this identity in order to promote in soft power issues. And, but nowadays we are facing all these problems with the West, connected with sanctions and misunderstandings about Crimea and so on and so forth. We'll need to elaborate it. And I feel that instruments of soft security and this dialogue that we are having today will help us to facilitate dialogue and communication between us, not only, you know, quarrels. It will be really better. So civilizational dilemma that Russia is facing and will be facing for many, many years where to move. The problems of identity, it is, it is so important. And another issue that I want to express is that many Russian scientists have elaborated the notion that Russian character, Russian mentality is so difficult because of orthodox pagans, religious syncretism, because Russian character is full of orthodox categories. Um, the majority of Russians are orthodox, so it is difficult to deal with this mentality issues and it does really harm soft power issues. Vladimir Putin and Kremlin, I'm sharing with you this idea, they introduced Russian idea and Russian values based on church based on orthodox values. Do you remember the case and quarrels were about pussy riots? There were lots of, you know, misunderstandings and problems connected with this occasions. But, and Kremlin has been really blamed for being very, very orthodox. But this is not about religion. This is Russian idea. And Kremlin, wants to introduce orthodoxy, orthodoxy not as religion, but as the number of values, ideas, because we don't have this identity. It is a problem for Russia, East, West, this enormous space. And Kremlin chose orthodox traditions and orthodox values as a basis for Russian idea. Even, just a small example for you, the 8th of July, the day of Peter and Fivronia, we call it anti-Saint Valentine's Day. This is something that Russia wants to introduce very, you know, pure, pure Russian, very Russian, very Russian holiday. Because we lost in 1991, we lost our identity because we wanted to be so close to the West. We started losing our holidays. We started celebrating Catholic Christmas 
I think that the majority of Russians will be celebrated. Russians love holidays. We said, I feel that we even celebrate Chinese New Year, you know, all holidays. This is, this is mentality too. So just some, just some traces, who does soft politics in Russia? First and foremost, Rossatrudnichstva, the Russian program that is involved. Then I think that in some of the universities you had a chance to see Foundation Ruski Mir, Russian Peace, that also is involved in implementing soft security, in, well, soft power of Russian Federation, promoting Russian language and culture mostly. The channel Russia Today, by the way, its accounts have been, I think a week ago, its accounts were arrested in the United States of America. That's, that was the day when Russia started saying, yes, we rang the bell. If the accounts were arrested, then we did something good and great. And this is really a good project, a good TV channel that is connected with soft power. Very, very good channel representing Russian, you know, Russian visions, Russian political, cultural, linguistic visions. Then we also have Russian diaspora that is working, that is promoting soft issues, legislative assemblies on the regional levels, you know that Russia is a federation, is a federal state. By the way, um, every now and then we blame Ukraine for not bringing federal standards to the state. We ask Ukraine, why, uh, why can't you introduce federation instead of unitarian state? Because if you introduce federation, then the problems with Donetsk and Lugansk will be solved, just like this. But there is another pair of shoes, you know, I'm, I'm well, being Russian, I'm talking about Ukraine. This is politically incorrect, so I'll, I'll move on. Um, the, the level in Russia, because Russia is a federation, the level of federal governments is very important. And our legislative assemblies, they can promote and provide their own international politics. This is very important when we are talking about soft power because they have done a lot f to promote soft power issues. And the element, the instrument of twin cities, twin cities um, and different associations, for example, Br BRICS, Twin Cities Association, does a lot to promote soft power. The friendship of cities, you know, because St. Petersburg, I don't know who has ever, I have one of my um, beloved students here in this audience represented, and I'm so happy that she's here and she can judge me. But I hope that some, uh, someone else has visited St. Petersburg. And St. Petersburg is a fantastic city that has become a national brand that promotes Russia worldwide. Because Moscow doesn't have a good connotation for Russia, even for Russia, and worldwide too. Moscow as a city is not very good. It is a not, it is not good Russian brand for soft power issues. St. Petersburg is really, really better. So sports, uh, yes, I know, sports, Olympic Games in Sochi that have already rang the bell. I hope that the football uh, cup will be in Russia for Russians. This is a very important instrument of soft power too. And at last, tourism. Tourism is very important for Russia to promote. And um, crime, well, Crimea, we hope that um, one day the whole world will be welcomed in Crimea in case of tourism. This is also soft power. And by the way, soft power issues are connected with label made in Russia. Nowadays, everything that is made in Russia is important and is very, very famous. So allow me to end up with several conclusions, pointing out that soft power issues are very important in Russia nowadays, though unfortunately when scientists, when we elaborate the concept, we understand that still we have so many issues connected with hard power. 
Still, Russia is more with hard power than soft power. We need to elaborate it, probably together with Europe and with the United States, not making bridges, having dialogue. And unfortunately, we understand that nowadays Russia lacks non-governmental organizations and, uh, well, participation in promotion, in promoting soft security issues, soft power of Russian Federation. This is also very important. And we understand that Russia nowadays does really have not very good brand. Uh, we are not, we have been not good a bit last 10 years in this national branding. And I know that with Europe, with the United States of America, we have so many um, security, hard security issues that we need to come through. And I'm, I'm sure that cultural diplomacy will definitely help us to promote dialogue and to stay in peace because it's a small world after all, you know? Thank you. No, thank you. We will share, share the microphone. So, no, thank you very, very much for that presentation. We've really had, uh, I think, a very impressive group of presentations, uh, huge topics. <laughs> so, we need actually a lot of time for the discussion. Russia, Egypt, Israel, Palestine, Nigeria, each of them, uh, we would need a half hour for the discussion. So, I'm just trying to think out loud of what we should do. We're 15 minutes behind schedule. Uh, the Honorable Yasser Yakesh is here. He's come all the way from Turkey, so I don't want to be too delayed for his speech scheduled for 4.30. So, what I'd suggest we should do, I really do want to take comments and questions especially since it really was, I think, you know, provocative, thought-inspiring, etc. Maybe what we could do, if you agree, have the questions and comments really brief, uh, but actually not the responses, because uh, I don't think we have time for both. And then we have the coffee break, and then the coffee break, we can maybe have the multilateral discussion. At least I want to allow just to see what reactions, what comments are here. Uh, I think that would be important. And then during the coffee break, you can uh, approach the speakers, we can actually report to each other, continue the debates and comments. Uh, that's my suggestion. Instead of cutting the questions, let's at least take the questions and comments and then discuss them informally in the coffee break. So if you could, as always, briefly uh, raise your hand, uh, briefly introduce yourself, uh, try to be concise so that as many voices can be heard as possible. Uh, I see a few hands. Esteban, do we have the second wireless mic as well? Excellent. So let's start here in the front. I see a hand here, the gentleman with the red tie. Uh, be, please briefly introduce yourself and pose your question or comment. Uh, my name is Yar Mohammad Badini, Editor-in-Chief of Baluchistan today from Pakistan. My first question is from Madam. As you discuss uh, briefly, and uh, my question is that the Russian doing what with their neighbors, just like a Ukraine. Oh, this is a, if you talk about the human rights, oh, they must be do very good with the neighbors about the Ukraine problem. It's recently, the Turkish uh, uh, on the uh, jet uh, for, uh, in near uh, the border violation, what you? think about the relationship with the Turkey and the my next question just I give my uh, from you sir my question is that you talk about the Israel Arab uh, conflict also all the Arabs also support the Israelis but you didn't th talk about the innocent Palestinians what they uh, every time they are facing my third question from you sir my question is that you talk about uh, your country and 150 languages are there, ethnic groups are there. How the government support them, their languages are uh, survive or not? My next second question from you, sir. Uh, Africans also face uh, dictatorship, military and army man uh, ruling. But uh, only the South Africa, Mr. Nelson Mandela do very great job. They give a many sacrifice for the democracy. But the East and Central Africa, why the democracy is not coming uh, very well just like a South Africa? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Multiple questions and comments. I think just behind him there was another hand. Yes? Okay. Let's take as many as we can and then we'll have our, our coffee break, please. Thank you very much. My name is Rivanos Malaho from Kenya. First and foremost, I'm very, very grateful to Mark because of this idea of uh, international cultural diplomacy. I have seen it a wonderful idea which must be supported and should be allowed to devolve up to the grassroots level because it is answering to a lot of questions. I'm very happy with that, uh, that idea. Thank you so much. Now, 
I have a comment, just a, a few comments. With international diplomacy, I want to compliment my brother from Nigeria. What you have said, I'm complimenting it. Because I also, a few years ago, I started uh, cultural diplomacy in our village, and uh, it has been growing on until it has reached even international level. I have been accommodating students from Europe, from America, from Canada, and Pacific countries in our our villages and doing com communal work, helping the communities improve their lifestyle. It takes a bit of time and it takes a lot of sacrifice to achieve it. So it is something which I commend it. And I want to commend also our brother from Egypt because of what you have but you participated in to create that kind of uh, democracy and fighting dictatorship. Because dictatorship in Africa has killed a lot of uh, our culture has killed integration, has killed participation, and people have become almost slaves because of dictatorship. We have introduced new colonial or slavery in Africa. So like us also in Kenya, some of us in Kenya and Africa, and especially East Africa, we are suffering the problem of our sister talking about Russia. Because we have also lost some kind of identity, especially the young people who are coming up. There are some who are in the rural areas who have taken their culture very strongly. And there are others who are in the village, in urban areas, some who are converted to Christianity. Christianity washed away our culture and it brought in another culture. I'm a Christian, by the way. I'm a professor. I'm a bishop of the church, but I'm very sorry to say there is also two kind of cultures where our old traditional African culture was washed away completely and the Western culture was introduced. So the people have adapted to who converted to Christianity and those ones who remained believing in their gods, it's very hard for them to come together. I don't know how we can address this kind of issue so that we develop and we revive our old African culture that brought us together, that eliminate, that did not accommodate dictatorship. Instead of when we allowed the Western culture through Christianity, we introduced also, uh, we introduced dictatorship quietly. So I'm, I'm, asking a question, how do we fight it to eliminate this kind of uh, modern life, uh, modern culture where people have done away with their old culture? Because our old culture, people shared together, people lived together, people worked together, and people supported together. But today, that one is no more existing. And I'm asking even now back to Mark, please, with the ICT, Devolve it. Make sure that this kind of message does not only end in developed countries. It should be also be taken to developing countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much for the question. And uh, just a brief response, and then we'll take maybe one more, because we're about 25 minutes late. Uh, definitely, I think ICD is committed to exactly what you were saying, not only to reach out to different regions, different countries, but very important, as you were implying as well, we've got to work with the firefighters, with the nurses, with the high school teachers, not just the VIPs, the politicians, et cetera. So really, as you were saying, how do we get to the grassroots? How do we really get to society? Uh, not easy, and I think there, what's important is local partners. Uh, if ICD wants to work in Kenya, we need you. We need initiatives, really local uh, partners in those communities, uh, but vitally important that it's not just the theory, but it really becomes the practice uh, all the way to the grassroots level. I think we have time for one more comment question. I'm not sure who is first, so maybe uh, you can help uh, with the democracy of the audience, and then the other questions will have to do, I guess, informally during the break. So the, the final question comments before the break. Thank you. Please. Thank you for the attention. Uh, I have a question to uh, Ahmed uh, Mahmoud. Introduce yourself first, please. I'm, I'm Tabriz Jafarov from Azerbaijan. But uh, I live in the Turkey for my master degree. Okay. Uh, and every day I see refugees of Syria uh, that have come into Turkey. Always when I discuss the situation of their country, uh, I ask to answer that, what happened in Syria? Uh, they answer all time, we want it. 
they want it, uh, democracy, but it has, it has not been a reality. And to add democracy as this did not need for them. And uh, at, the moment, at the moment, I wanted to ask you about this. How do you think about democracy dreams as these? Was the very important for them, for the Syria? How do you think? And it's the same for the Egyptians too. This is a very good question, small question. Yes, I would love uh, to. Thank you very much. Thank so you very much I, for attention. As I said, unfortunately, we don't have time for a two-way discussion now, but at least we heard some of the questions and comments, so we can really be thinking together as a group. What I'd suggest now, since we are 24 minutes late, let's have a break. Uh, maybe not 30 minutes, 20 minutes, but I think it is good that we have some informal opportunities to speak. We have some coffee, some refreshments also waiting for us. And then I don't think it was intentional, but I noticed on the program, we ended the last speaker was from Russia. Uh, the first speaker after the break is from Turkey, uh, which is also interesting as well. Uh -huh. Maybe we can build some bridges as well today uh, at a time when soft power is, of course, vitally important. So uh, I wish you all an excellent uh, brief break, let's say 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll begin immediately with the Honorable Mr. Yasser Yakesh, former Foreign Minister of Turkey. Thank you. And a final round of applause for all of the speakers as well.